You're watching Netflix. You're three episodes deep into a series you don't even like anymore. And someone hits you with this fun fact. Oh yeah, most of Netflix's backend is powered by Java. Wait, Java? That language from your intro to programming class that made you question your life choices? The one where printing Hello World feels like configuring a rocket launch? That Java. Netflix, the gold standard of streaming technology, is running on code that most devs associate with enterprise-level suffering and coffee-stained documentation. This is one of those moments where your brain kind of breaks a little. Because Netflix is supposed to be cutting edge, right? Sleek UIs, adaptive streaming, personalized recommendations that somehow always guess you're in the mood for serial killer documentaries. So naturally, you'd assume it runs on something modern and trendy like Rust, Go, or at least some obscure microservice written entirely in TypeScript and duct tape. But no. Behind that beautiful UI, there's a whole army of microservices built in plain old Java, with Spring Boot acting like the duct tape that actually works. To be fair, Java gets a lot of hate, and most of it is honestly pretty deserved. It's verbose, it's got the vibes of a 50-year-old enterprise architect who still swears by XML, and writing a REST API in it feels like filling out a mortgage application. But here's the twist. Netflix didn't just inherit Java. They chose it, willingly, enthusiastically. And they didn't just use it quietly, either. They built an entire arsenal of open source tools with it. You've probably heard of Hystrix, the library that prevents your services from cascading into failure when one thing goes wrong. Or Eureka, which handles service discovery. Or Zool, their API gateway that routes millions of requests per second. All of them are Java-based. All of them are used by other companies, too. It's like finding out your grandma wrote Kubernetes. Why? Because Java, despite the memes, still slaps. It's fast. It's scalable. It runs on the JVM, which is basically a performance monster if you know how to tune it. The ecosystem is mature, battle-tested, and full of libraries that work. And with Spring Boot, Java actually becomes tolerable. You can spin up a microservice with one class and a couple of annotations instead of drowning in XML configurations. It's still Java, but with fewer tiers and more auto-wiring. But I know what you're thinking. Isn't Java dead? Isn't it the thing boomers code in while millennials use Node and Gen Z invents yet another JavaScript framework every 3.5 seconds? Nope. Java is undead. It's the immortal vampire of programming languages. According to the Taiyobi Index and Stack Overflow's developer survey, Java is still consistently in the top five programming languages used globally. Over 90% of Fortune 500 companies still rely on it. That's not just old code being maintained, that's active usage. Java is the cockroach of programming languages. The nuclear apocalypse hits, and it's still compiling. So here's the real takeaway. Netflix doesn't care if your hacker news thread says Java is uncool. They care that it works, that it scales, that it handles hundreds of millions of users without falling apart. And that's the kind of boring, effective technology companies bet on. Because while you're out here arguing whether Bun is faster than Deno, Java is quietly doing its job in the background, powering your fifth straight episode of Love is Blind. Ugh. Brother, ugh. What's that? What's that, brother? Sometimes the best tech isn't the shiny new thing. It's the boring, reliable stuff that just won't die. And Java? Java is immortal. So next time you hit play on Netflix, just remember, somewhere deep in the back end, there's a spring boot service logging your every binge watch decision. And if that thought made you twitch a little, go ahead and leave your Java trauma story in the comments. Or better, your redemption arc. Oh, and if you too want to make cool things with Java, why not check out Code Crafters? Their platform gives you access to unique projects that will help you stand out from the competition without the clown shoes and nose. Want to build an HTTP or DNS server from scratch? Check. Hell, you can even craft your own version of Git. All while others are still struggling to center that annoying div in their to-do app. You can start some projects free of charge, and if you use my link in the description, you can get yourself a whopping 40% off, so hurry up. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to share and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.